Okay, thank you everyone. Um, let me start by introducing myself and, and Milko introducing ourselves. So my name is Martin Hoskin. I'm a principal architect at VMware. I work in the cloud practice. Um, so I have at the moment one foot in our VCPP program and one foot in our, our VMC on AWS program for partners as well. I'm also joined by Milko, who can introduce himself. Hello everyone. My name is Milko Swalf. I'm an architect in our uh, professional Services Center of Excellence, where we do custom software development for our customers and partners. Okay. So, first of all, thank you for coming to this session. This is what we refer to as the graveyard shift of VMworld, you know, the last session before everyone flies home. So, really appreciate you taking the time to come here. And it's a pity, actually, because this is a very interesting session, particularly for our cloud provider partners who are, who are working with the it's really some interesting stuff we can do now, and Milko is going to demonstrate, demonstrate that a little later on. Um, first of all, though, the usual disclaimer, side, disclaimer slide. Um, however, everything we're going to talk about today is available now. So the extensibility that um, we're going to talk about and Milko is going to demonstrate is available in version 9, 9.1, and 9.5 of vCloud Director. Of course, as we move into the next release as well, with 100% HTML5 on both the service provider portal and the consumer portal, we have even more options available to us. But vCloud Director 9.5 is 100% HTML5 for the consumer portal. So from a consumer facing uh, perspective, everything we're talking about is fully available today. Um, and to some extent within the, the services portal as well, the service provider portal as well. So starting off, putting things into context, vCloud Director has been around a long time now. However, in the last uh, two and a half years, Hopefully those of you who are familiar with the product or use the product will have seen a marked difference. The six monthly release cycle, first of all. We've got a new product team at VMware led up by John Dwyer, as I'm sure many of you have met him. And also um, the new investment. So a lot more money gone into the product, going into the product. The reason for that is it is the strategic platform for our cloud providers going forward. So a lot more investment in it. And one of the key parts of that investment is the new extensibility framework. It is a key part of how we intend going forward to deliver services, not just services through vCloud Director, but also through our managed service provider program as well. So things like exposing HCX or, or NSX Cloud or maybe the, you know, the uh, VMware uh, Kubernetes engine, exposing those services through vCloud Director as well. But the key things really are what we're aiming to do. Service providers want to enhance their differentiation and by having this flexibility to present multiple different service types, it gives, it, it gives them that. Optimize efficiency, obviously running workflows from both a provider perspective and from a consumer perspective, can operize, uh, you know, reduce the um, operational overhead from both an end consumer and a service provider perspective, and of course ultimately drive revenue. Build services that people want to consume, and we'll, we'll talk about, a, a little bit more about some of those later on, but things like machine learning as a service. Milk is going to demonstrate things like auto scaling and service now integration into vCloud Director. So, actually delivering services, not just the IaaS platform which, for which we, we know and maybe we love vCloud Director, but actually delivering services on top of vCloud Director. So, why is it important? As I mentioned, really, vCloud Director is the strategic platform for our cloud providers. Whether you want to offer IaaS services or just other services, you can use the extensible HTML5 portal to deliver a whole range of services as well. So, as I say, it says there, it is VMware is designed to orchestrate the provision of hybrid clouds that are ready for consumption in a matter of minutes, but going beyond that, delivering services. So brief history, and I'm not going to go through every single one of these points because it would be boring, but this is the, the history of vCloud Director since the original release in 2010, taking us up to 2017. And the, 2017 was the first real release that had the usable HTML5 UI. There was some HTML5 in that previously for NSX consumption, but HTML5 really got introduced in that version 9 release in 2017. So you can see there the growth and the investment. Of course. VMware now is putting far greater investment, as we, as we mentioned a moment ago. So where have we gone from 2017? So this is the, where we've come from from 2017. I'll just build this out. So obviously vCloud Director introduced multi-site, NSX um, consumption of, of the majority, of not all now, of NSX services available through vCloud Director. Um, we're moving also, of course, towards NSXT. That's going to be a gradual um, 
thing we progress over the next three releases of vCloud Reactor to meet specific use cases like PKS and VMware Cloud and AWS modeling as well. Um, 9.5 now, and we'll have another release then around the March, April timeframe of 2019. And as I said, that's, that's codenamed the Wellington release, and that'll complete the HTML5 for the service provider portal as well as the consumer portal. 9.5, as 9.1, has got this ability to integrate additional services. So key points here to accelerate automation, whether we're looking at VRO integration or custom extensibility integration, the ability to unlock new customer segments by offering custom services, solutions. I go around the world talking to cloud providers continuously, and many of them have particular market segments they work in. Maybe it's media, maybe it's healthcare, um, maybe it's uh, you know, government. Those are the types of services that are specific to a particular uh, vertical, and you can then de you know, develop services within your vCloud Director environment for that particular vert vertical. Um, diversify your portfolio, of course, adding things like machine learning as a service, which is something that a lot of people are trying to do at the moment through TensorFlow or Watson, um, and integrate other ISVs. So into that. So we will have seen um, already a number of ISVs uh, delivering extensible services to vCloud Director, and I'll come back to that in a moment. So just to summarize, vCloud Director now will allow you to present VRO workflows to your consumers. You can also use VRO workflows for internal operations, maybe onboarding operations or management operations. But key, you can deliver those services uh, as well, VRO services to your cloud consumers. So whether you want to deliver workflows that you've taken from VRA or you've built custom for them, that is something that we're seeing very much in, in, in commonplace. And this enables that differentiation as we talked about. So VRO integration, for example, here we can see the service library. We've got a VRO workflow there that opens a ticket, sends an email support, the view ticket, configure DR. So it doesn't matter which service we click on, we can open up the window, enter in any custom parameters that we have for that particular workflow, and then deliver those workflows. And this is basically a high level architecture of what this looks like. So you can see extensibility and service integration can be done both at the, the UI level, but also the API level. And that's key, of course, for many of our partners, our providers who predominantly use the API, maybe have, the, have a custom portal above VCD. So you can see the connectivity there into, VR, into VRO, vCenter, and then the third party integration whether we're talking about EMC Avamar, which was announced this week, the integration for that, vRealize Operations, vCloud Availability, which will come, that portal will come uh, a little later on, early next year, I believe, ServiceNow integration, which we'll come on to a little later on, or any other third-party integration you want to do. So the key point of this session, though, is going to be the extensibility, and, and Milko will demonstrate multiple examples of, of extensibility in a moment. Uh, However, you can see vCloud Director has a new HTML5 UI. That HTML5 UI allows us to build in plugins or custom, provide custom extensibility in order to integrate these services. So whether you've got a custom service that's been developed by Milko's team here on the left-hand side, or an ISV service, maybe developed by someone like Dell EMC for Avamar, or maybe others that will come shortly as well, and or maybe a custom service that you've developed by yourself, so the service provider service that they've coded themselves and integrated themselves. So extensibility can happen at multiple different points. Effectively, you can you can develop your own. You can work with professional services, our, VM, our VMware professional services teams to do them, and also ISVs, our, our partners who develop various products to integrate with vCloud Director. Examples of those. We've already released a vCloud Director um, VROps plugin. So this allows you to present VROps um, dashboards directly to your tenants. So for the first time with this plugin, we have true multi-tenancy in VROps, allowing tenant-facing dashboards to be presented to vCloud Director. And this uses this extensibility technology to extend the UI to present these HTML5 pages to the end consumer. And there's an example of an end consumer um, looking at, uh, looking at the, the, the performance, CPU, memory performance of, of their virtual machine within uh, vCloud Director. But those are VROps metrics being presented to vCloud Director. Likewise, and we had, this was announced this, year, this week, so this is new, Dell EMC have built a plugin for Avamar, 
So this allows you to present self-service Avamar services effectively to your clients. So backup, recovery, and, and management of, the, of that data. Allow your consumers to manage that directly from the vehicle director um, UI. So these are just two examples of extensibility developed by ISVs. Of course, in Dell's case, it's our, our, our parent company, and the VROps plugin was developed internally within VMware. We will, over time, see more and more of these ISV plugins. VMware is talking to multiple different partners at the moment about developing these and helping them develop them. There's none that I'm able to announce today, but I'm certainly part of those conversations um, as, they go on, as, they, as they go forward. And just as another screenshot from the, uh, the, the tenant portal for, for the Avamar plugin. So you can see a huge amount of information available to you, um, providing a number of VMs that are protected, the amount of data that's been consumed, et cetera, which of course will be uh, relevant. And this is how it's achieved. Custom UI extensibility. So we're talking about HTML5, uh, style sheets, JavaScript, Angular Floor. Clarity is of course the VM where the VMware um, open source uh, project to allow common, uh, common UI framework, if you like. Um, and this is just a, an example of that. So just to, to build that out, so what are we looking at? We're looking at multi-tenanted, multi-tenanted, keyword there, a services delivered through UI extensibility, offering SaaS services. Maybe you're presenting HCX to your service, self-service consumption of HCX to your, your consumers offered directly to vCloud Director. Maybe it's NSX Cloud, maybe you could just offer you know, Office 365 integration using single sign-on, have a button on that screen that links you into your Office 365. So single pane of class presentation. Um, also, I've talked to customers who are looking to build S3 plugins. So they want to be able to consume S3 storage from vCloud Director. I don't think anyone's actually done that yet, but they're certainly looking at the options for doing that. So that's just a, a, web, a web portal, a web interface to leverage um, S3 or maybe other storage services through the vCloud Director portal. And this just opens up all range of possibilities. Whatever your imagination, what you, well, not your imagination, whatever your consumers want, I guess. Whatever your customers are looking for, you should be able to develop services in a custom manner for those different verticals we talked about, healthcare, media, um, maybe government, or just general purpose PaaS type services, SaaS type services for your consumers. And now, this is the, gonna be the technical bit, because, you know, Milko is a lot smarter than I am. So he's going to show some of the extensibility that he's demoed for the next 20 or 30 minutes or so. Uh, well, 30, 30 minutes or so, hopefully. Otherwise, we'll uh, get out of here a little early. And um, you know, pass it over. Cool. So I'm going to hand over to Milko, and I'm going to sit on the front and enjoy this as well. Thank you. OK. So, um, so I'm going to show you a few use cases um, and just to set the scene. It, it is um, a kind of a proof of concept what you are going to see. It's not like full-fledged uh, um, integrations. Uh, but And we can also, if you have questions, discuss possible options and how I did the proof of concept, etc. Because I, I'm sure you'll be interested. So let me start with um, auto-scaling, right? And this is, I would suspect that we are going to log in again, but let's see. This is, um, you know, the VCD UI I, that's uh, running uh, 9.1, I think. So here, what what do we see on this screen? Uh, we see a table with, um, obviously, empty table with auto scaling rules. But actually, let me first show you what I have and what I want to auto scale. I have um, a, like a website running a very simple application which shows me like which node is responding right to uh, the world balancer. Uh, I have two nodes at the moment, and I want if, let's say, let's go and create a rule. So now we give it a name. We select a template from which to provision new nodes. Uh, the target uh, VApp, which is our website, the we give it the edge gateway and the pool name where the world balancer is located for this particular um, application. Now we give it um, um, some numbers like 
what is the threshold for, for the application to scale. And this would mean like 70% um, of the average CPU is reached. So let's create that one. So now what is happening is like, as Martin explained, this is a, a HTML plugin, but we also created a API extensibility on the back end from VRO, which is handled through RabbitMQ notifications. And if we go and open VRO, and so you have to excuse me for uh, being a little bit slower, but b this is because it runs in like Sofia, in my lab. Um, <laughs> could not take it with me. Uh, but what did this happened was like it made a request to the backend, uh, went and created several. Uh, I need to log in again. Probably I would have to do it in every system since it was like one hour ago. But it created um, in VROPS um, symptom definitions and award definitions for our website. So this would basically trigger an award to, now you, you see we have a custom group which should contain two virtual machines, our website. Then if we go and see the symptom definitions, they are a lot, like out of the box. But if we filter that, we'll see symptom definitions for our website. Of course, this can be, usually VROPS is not exposed to tenants. And this can be like tenanted in a way that we do not, like if uh, one tenant creates a rule with name website does not like overwrite with, or conflict with others. Um, and we have our definitions as well. So now, um, yeah, as I said, it's a little bit slow. What will happen since I'm running like uh, well, just cut uh, dev zero to dev now? and that's utilizing the 100% of the CPU. Um, so what will happen is that there will be an alert uh, that's triggered from VROPS um, to show you the word definitions for our website. That can take a few minutes, just to <coughs> let you know, and that's just because VROPS needs to, um, uh, so it's configured on five minute interval to monitor resources and it needs to go through one cycle at least to kind of uh, uh, calculate the numbers for the, for the website. So while we wait for that to happen, why don't we go and check some other integrations? So here, you see that running on localhost, but actually I'm using the, the SDK and um, I don't know whether that's uh, in, um, in the SDK, but that's running like a proxy to my environment. So this is like my last development. So I haven't published that plugin to the VCD UI. So I can, it's easy to be developed offline kind of. So what I'm going to show you is support requests. So this is an integration with ServiceNow where tenants can create um, tickets to service providers through the VCD user interface. Now, I am logging in as myself, and I'm just saying, like, um, my, I don't know, network doesn't work. Very descriptive. And it's always the network. <laughs> yeah. Blame NSX. Yeah, so what will happen is that it goes through the same process, VRO, and then VRO integrates, integrates with ServiceNow. Now if we log in again, and we go at the end, we'll see, we should see, my network doesn't work. So that's a development instance of ServiceNow I created, so what I can say like an, as an administrator is like uh, I rebooted. 
the switch. Can you try again? And I can resolve that issue. So if we go back here and we, actually if I click on this one, I we should get the details of the issue. So we should be able to see the comment. I rebooted the switch, can you try again? Now, since we're, I'm not doing background refresh, just for the purpose of the proof of concept, right? That's why it did not change the status, but if I refresh the page, it should change it. And I would like to do that, <laughs> just because it um, now, let's say, uh, as a tenant user, I go and check and it, it's working perfectly fine and it's resolved and I, I can close the issue. So I give it, um, these are standard um, um, and uh, actually required fields to close the issue. And so I say it's solved, it works now, thanks. And hopefully it will disappear if there are no bugs. Now, if we go back to service now and click on this one, we should see the command here and that it's resolved. So basically, this is like just one workflow, like you can comment on issues and you can communicate through the user interface of VCD, but all of these is like the plugin, right, which I developed. And actually, Martin, it's even easier. Just, just as, you, uh, as you show the screenshot, I want to show an easier one. Just, it's like TypeScript. It's even, it's even better, right? So Angular, TypeScript, it's super easy to write such plugins. Now, let me go back to this guy and see whether we have an alert. Still, we don't want have one. Maybe we should check the trap. So what this happens, what, what will happen actually is like from the VROP site, um, when an alert is triggered, there are outbound plugins. And right now it is configured with the uh, um, SMTP, SNMP, sorry, uh, plugin to send the trap to, to Vero but it can be also MQP or some other protocols that might be more suitable for that purpose. Um, so we still don't have that plugin. So maybe I can go and show you the data word, sorry. I can show you the other integration I wanted to show. And this is, okay, okay, <laughs> it's fine. So the other one is like, um, looking into the future, uh, since it's, it's um, a, a bit, uh, how not everyone is doing it, just the like, hyperscalers, like, that's a, basically the use case is function as a service, and I've implemented it the most um, simple possible way. Just let me show you. So what, did, what can I do? I can define functions and associate them with endpoints, and when you hit the endpoint, the function is triggered. And that happens on a Docker host in a Docker container, and we run the, currently we support only, uh, not we, I mean the proof of concept is built to support only JavaScript. So let's see whether this one works. So what this test function does is actually get request to the endpoint, which is, if you notice, API or uh, PSUE hello. Now, this creates um, a, like a tenanted endpoint, right? Because it does contain the tenant inside the, the, U, the URI. So if I create a function, let's say VMworld, select the language, only one option, and I give it the target route, which is the endpoint, um, it will automatically generate me the correct URL. 
Now, if I go and find the, um, the code, so I've actually played around a bit and integrated um, um, a JavaScript editor inside VCD. So it's a third party library. So you can, you can see we have syntax highlighting and, and stuff. Um, and hit create. So now when I do that, since like creating, um, so what it does is actually goes back and creates a Docker image and then creates a Docker container out of that. And that's not a job that's like, uh, takes like many seconds to complete. That's why I have implemented in a asynchronous manner. So right now if I, so you can see we have state and once it turns into um, um, status to be ready, we can invoke the function. You can see the route is um, with PSC with tenant. Hello, VMworld. Cool stuff. So that's uh, let let's let's go back, pray a little bit, and <laughs> hey. there you go. We have it. So now what will happen is like if this guy refreshes. We will see the trap here. It's, it is triggered. And, ah, yeah. And again, it's asynchronous operations, so that's why I don't see the logs in there. But if I go to the VRO, it triggers the workflow that will handle the, the operation of adding another node. So adding another node is like cloning from template, booting it up, up, waiting for it to get an IP address, then registering the IP address to the load balancer so it can be um, made or can serve for requests, right? And we can check here the execution of that workflow. We don't have logs. Okay, now actually it did create. Okay, that was fast. If I go back here, we can see we have three VMs and we have our website node, which is like uh, the name of the VM is like how to generate it. So we know like which node, how many nodes we have added, we can limit the to, for number of nodes, for example, and stuff like this. Now we are waiting for it to get an IP address. This means to boot up and using DHCP get the IP address. So if I go here, it's still, okay, it's booted. VMware tools are running, so that should be pretty quick. Okay, we have an IP address. Now if we go back here, we, it added, or it's currently adding the IP address to the wall balancer pool. Let's go and check that. After we go login again. So I have one edge gateway. And I can see I have three members and this is the IP address of the new member. So now, what the end, what it does is actually add, it adds this machine to the custom group in VROPS, right? Because we want it to be monitored as well. We want this, since it will take some of the load, we want it pro to properly be handled so we don't get requests. So let's see what, what happens here. There you go. All right, that worked. Okay, so so this is like um, from the like how to say from user perspective how it looks like. I can, if you want, I can go into more details. I think actually we do have time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We do have time, so yeah. maybe I can talk about more on on what on which one. Maybe I can talk about more on the functions service a little bit, just to show you how we do, like I have 
the scripts here, like um, what it happens at the back end when you create the function. Um, it actually creates a custom API endpoint in VCD. So here we are not using an API gateway that you might consider. Um, there are several options like on the market, but we're using VCD for that purpose. That, for me, was easier to implement, but it might be something to be considered because if you offer that to like tenants and they create on the VCD API a lot of extensions, it might be, how to say, you might need more like sales and um, front end to, to be able to handle the load that these functions are going to be, like using VCD API as API gateway might not be the best solution, right? But so, but you can, yeah. So what this um, did, so I don't know whether you guys know, but just a brief summary on the um, API, um, custom APIs, what it does is like we create an object in VCD and VCD knows like if somebody sends a request to that endpoint, it gets the request, wraps it into a message and then sends it to the um, IMQP queue, right? And on, on, on the other end, we have VRO listening and we might have several of those, right, for a world distribution purposes. Um, VRO listens for those messages and when they are, um, they are received, then it unwraps the message and in our case, we are doing like, um, I can actually show you the code, the, what it does when it runs. It actually uses VRO to make an HTTP request to the container itself. So we start the container and we make an, uh, we send the request to the container. So we, it's not another alternative. The alternative is to do like um, command line parameters kind of passing to the container itself because you need the payload uh, to be provided to the function itself so the function can actually do something with it. Um, and then when the response is returned, it returns it back to the IMQP and then it goes to the um, to the like, consumer of that function. Now this can be done also on this side. At the moment it's like um, one Docker host running containers, so super simple stuff, right? But it can be also done with like uh, Kubernetes for instance, where you would have those containers um, being maybe warmed up and leave Kubernetes to handle the distribution of the world. And then you can have uh, for instance, a queue pair, um, um, uh, so eliminate the, this piece where VRO will just invoke directly the container, but have it through the queue, and on the other end, have the function itself listen for the for the messages from the queue and handle that. I think that's um, um, some of the implementations do that. Um, and it might be, but it, it increased the complexity a little bit more, so I decided to not go with that implementation in the interest of my time. Um, and you can see here the code, it just SSH and creates some Docker stuff. Um, okay. I talked about service now, auto scaling. Okay. Maybe we can open up for yeah. questions or things um, to show. Yeah, I've got some closing slides as well, just summarizing. But we we've, we've, you know, went through that a little bit quicker than we thought we were going to do. So are there any questions for Milko? You know, uh, we, we can use the mic because we're recording. Um, it'd be great. Yeah, uh, so the extensions are really cool. So, uh, are you guys going to be providing these examples um, on like a GitHub or something so we can kind of well, play around with it and see what we can do? Uh, I, I was thinking about that, but at the moment, the way I've built that is like, um, so to open source it, we have a program at VMware where, it, and yeah. one of the requirements is like, uh, you should be able to um, 
consume, everything should be public, right, or open source. If you are using another library or build tool, it needs to be like open source. And so the way I did that was using our own internal libraries, which are not op open source, and tools, and the process. Mm -hmm. So you see here the code base, that's not like the typical VRO stuff. That's uh, pure JavaScript, and we use internal tools to, to do that. So I, can, I think we can open source it, but it will be very hard for you to actually manage to play around with it, right? Yeah. But have you got a link to your blog? You've Milk has yes. blogged extensively about each of these use cases in the last couple of weeks, so um, we can maybe show the link to that. We can get a little bit more yeah. depth as well. Any other questions from a development perspective of our engineering? <laughs> So just to be clear, so Milko is based out of Sofia, and he's part of a team within our VMware Professional Services that does custom development. And that team is available. You know, it's, it's not free, unfortunately. It is a professional services team. They are, they are billable. So, but they are a team that can actually come, come and work with you, talk, listen to your use cases, and actually help you develop custom work like this. This is what this team is for. So if you're interested, obviously you can grab, grab us later on at the end of the session, but also talk to your VMware sales uh, team, account teams, and they'll be able to put, point you in the right direction and help you start off that engagement as well. Okay, cool. Can we flip back to the other laptop, and I'll just do some closing, um, and then will any other outstanding questions before we, uh, we complete. So just as a summary, really, and just a few slides to summarize what we've done here. Um, this really takes us to the next level of vCloud Director. And I mentioned this earlier on, vCloud Director is becoming about service delivery, not just IaaS. So we're now seeing people and many cloud providers trying to do really quite interesting things and build new, exciting types of services. Of course, one of the key ones is, is machine learning as a service. And I'm, I, you know, I work with lots of different partners, our, our largest partners, and at least three of them at the moment are developing a machine learning strategy to be able to offer machine learning as, as a service. And here's just an example. Um, this is not, you know, this is fairly open source type of stuff. Anyway, this is TensorFlow and a, an example of how you can build around VRO, around integration, machine learning as a service. Yeah, I, I'm not going into a huge amount of detail about this because these are actual engagements with partners, but certainly the things that you can start thinking about doing now. And, re and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Our partners can r deliver what services their consumers need. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier on, government, healthcare, media, we know that there's lots of different verticals, retail, et cetera, that our partners focus on. Some partners focus purely on government customers. I've talked to partners who were um, focused in the US purely on healthcare and, and, and other types of retail establishments. So really, whether it's DR as a service, whether it's actual custom development as a service, integration of our custom tools, scripting services, traditional PaaS services, traditional PaaS services is an odd term, but that, that's absolutely the case, really opens up a whole wide ranging of potential for the services you can de deliver, not, through, through not just VRO, as, with its native integration in VCD, but also to the custom extensibility that, uh, that Milko has, has talked about today. So really, this is just about building services, building opportunities to differentiate you as a cloud provider. I think there's one more, yeah. Differentiate you as a cloud provider, and of course, monetize those services. That's what it comes down to at the end, end of the day, being able to monetize services. So things like IaaS, we have native in vCloud Director. Advanced networking services, through NSX, we're able to consume the vast majority of NSX services to vCloud Director in a, in a fully monetizable way, um, service by service, tenant by tenant. So whether you want to use distributed load balancing, or, or sorry, distributed uh, firewalling or load balancing, you can, you, can, you can actually monetize those individually as, as components per tenant by te per tenant. DR as a service, things like vCloud availability, and data protection through the Dell, Dell EMC Avamar plugin we saw, saw earlier on. And other, you know, other vendors are working on these things, type of things at the moment, but I'm really not allowed to mention them at the moment. Then custom PaaS services, or IoT services, machine learning, Kubernetes as a service, presenting that through this custom extensibility portal and, and, and presenting those services that we've seen today. SaaS integration, whether it's ServiceNow, whether it's VMware SaaS services, our, VMware, our cloud.vmware services like HCX, like the VMware Kubernetes engine, NSX Cloud, and about 12, 14 other services that VMware have launched over the last 12, 14 months or so. 
And then these custom services, exactly what Milko has talked about today, the auto scaling service, the functions as a service, custom services, monetizing those and adding them in. One thing we maybe didn't make clear earlier on is that these services can be presented on a tenant by tenant basis. So you don't have to present all services to all tenants. Maybe you, need to, you want to have tiers of service, you know, gold, silver, bronze type of services. So you, you offer basic services at a basic cost and those services get increased, you know, the, the number and availability of those services get increased as, as, as the, the, the tiers get higher. So just in summarize, and this really summarizes what we started, about, we started with, driving revenue with new custom services, become efficient, operationally efficient by, by running VRO workflows to onboard new tenants and maybe you know, updating configuration management databases or whatever the processes you have for, update, you know, for onboarding a new tenant. It might be a step process, looking at VRO to carry out those steps and integrating that as a service that you provide to your operations team to onboard new tenants, really simplifying the onboarding process of new tenants. And then differentiate. We've talked about in a few different ways, but custom services to meet the, the needs of the verticals that your business works in, or maybe more general types of services like PaaS and SaaS as well. And there's a, my team have written quite a bit of a, a, a collateral around this. One of the guys on my team, Kelby, um, has written a number of white papers on that VMware VCAT site. That's where the VMware SDK is located as well. So those are some, some resources, and as we mentioned as well, Milko's blog as well is available for resources. So really, any other additional questions um, that you might have now? Has anyone so, done any of this already? Anyone done any extensibility? So, okay, sorry, go ahead. For partners and things that are incorporating maybe this, um, you know, you're gonna wanna deploy it obviously in the lab, but if any integration breaks that could really slow from dev to production for on the provider side. So is there any way that you can allow partners maybe test betas a little bit sooner so that we make sure functionality still works? So obviously VMware has a beta testing program for our, 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 for our products, but of course when you're talking about integrations, whether they come from third parties, we, we work very closely with those third parties. Of course we work very closely with Dell and development of that, and then our own, our own cloud management BU built the VROps one. So we're still in the learning phase of how this is, you know, how these are gonna work out with partners, but certainly from a development perspective, you would be expected to have some sort of development environment to test these these environment, you know, test these integrations out before you put them live. Because yes, the overhead is potentially unknown when you when you when you when you you know put integrations like this live into an environment. Okay. okay. So and, and just to, to, uh, yeah, just to add to that, in terms of the support, we if like you choose to go with professional services, we do offer custom uh, professional services support for the work we are doing. So all the code that we are going to be developed, it will be supported. Um, by VMware. Yeah. Cool. All engagements, anything that's developed by Milko's team comes yes. with support, basically. So not, not yeah. OPS. We don't <laughs> just but do a code drop and run. It's, yeah. a, it's part of a professional uh, service. Just to add, on the open source side, so the SDK actually is, is open source. There is a sample seat you can play around with. It is ar around ticketing. So it, it is available to yeah. play around. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the white paper that I had up on a moment ago on that um, VCAT website refers to yes. that, that, that open source code there as well. Sorry, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, quick question. So in terms of uh, uh, provisioning and consumption or usage mattering, uh, have there been any um, new features added? I mean, when you're talking about yeah. multi-tenancy, one of the key parts is yeah. being able to... Bill, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, of course, vCloud Director provides an iframe. So if you're using a third-party billing mechanism as solution, absolutely potential for integrating that directly into vCloud Director. VMware now, and I'm, I'm not sure, some of you may have seen some of this at the tab events, we're actually moving in a slightly different direction from a billing perspective. You know, the... We will be building, and we, well, we are building, a management pack for VROps 7 that provides billing uh, services to vCloud Director. That then gives us the capabilities to present that billing information exactly as we've done with the metrics that, that, that dashboards. Now, that's actually, that's a, a new management pack is currently in development. It's in development for VROps 7 specifically, so it will require VROps 7 when it's released. I, I can't give you a date. I don't know whether anyone else in, VMware here can give a date, but it's no, no. It's a shit. <laughs> it's a shaking. So, 
Yeah, this, this year. Anything else? Cool, we were happy to finish a little bit earlier um, and give you a bit of time back. So, like I said at the beginning, really appreciate you coming at this last, last, um, um, that last session of VMware um, and safe travels home and uh, hope to see you, some of you in Barcelona maybe, if not next year. Thank you. Thank you.